Hey guys, welcome back to episode two, <laughs> season two of the matchumentary with the legend himself, Matt Cluley. So you've had a week now to think about the... Uh, the Not really. ...the situation you've got yourself <laughs> into. I know you've been a bit busy, you've been gigging, you've been selling, you've been acting, you've been doing all that fun stuff, but have you accepted this now? Have you kind of... <laughs> like, accepted my fate? Yes. Um, it's happening. Yeah, I know it's happening. We have about three months to put together a 45 minute stage show and like an eight to 10 close up show. Don't wanna dwell on this anymore because we had the discussion about this last week, but I need you to be on board with this and recognize that it's gonna be quite a bit of hard work. Oh, you think? A little bit. Going from doing starting magic and not even knowing how to do a double lift 12 months ago to in three months time walking into the bear pit. Yeah. and. You you think that's lost on me how much of a, a, a... I reckon that's probably some sort of record. You reckon? Yeah, I don't think anyone's done the bad It's not the kind of record I want to be breaking, really. Well, it's okay. You'll be fine. So, um, right. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, what can possibly go wrong? Worst case scenario, you die on your ass. It's funny for everybody watching it when we broadcast it live over the internet. It's hilarious for me and Michael. That's the worst case scenario. Live? Two words. Live stream. There's no way they're going to let you live stream the bear pit. You don't think? They're not going to let him live stream. You don't it, think? They? You don't think? Do you not think? Are you really going to? You can't. Well, oh, well, we want to have the people have the sake. actual experience of you. They want to see you doing it live. Anyway, look, we're not going to dwell on that because we've already. I am. We got, we've already accepted the fact that you, you, you're you doing it. So now, <clears throat> I asked you to come prepared to show me a 10 minute performance of the sort of stuff that you would do, like you would do at a gig. You asked me to do, to bring some stuff that I would do live at a gig. Yeah, that's what I want. Which I don't is want what I've to, done. Yeah, great. So I haven't done anything special for it. It is literally what I would go out and do when I'm performing. Yeah. It's going to pretty much consist of everything that you mentioned in the last one. Great, so nothing wrong die, with that. A deck of the Stevens deck and some billets. Great. Pretty much it. We're going to look at that and then we're going to have a chat and we're going to work on where to go from there. Okay? Get yourself ready. I don't want to perform to you. Would can we you... get Jack in here? Yes, we can have Jack, but I'm going to be here as well. I don't want to perform to just you because you're going to snigger and laugh and smile. I want to snigger and, and laugh. Off. I want to snigger and laugh. Just get Jack in here. Honestly, I, I, I have so much respect for you. I won't snigger and laugh. But... You're sniggering and laughing while you're saying you're not going <laughs> to snigger and laugh. Yeah. I've got a gig in a minute. Just go, go and get Jack. I'll go and get him. Um, right. I'm not doing anything on you because you never take anything seriously. I'm so I'm going to... This is what I'm taking this here. very seriously. I'm going to perform to Jack because Jack will actually... You can't just perform to Jack. Why not? Because there's two spectators. Surely the first rule of magic is you involve everybody. Yeah, unless one of your spectators is Craig Petty. And then you still and you still get Craig Petty involved in the trick. Or a massive penis. Or both. Why do I get dragged into this? <laughs> Michael, can you remind me that we're going to get him to do Baby Shark for the next 16 yes. weeks in a row? <laughs> it's in in the car happening. park. Hey, excuse me. I seem to remember sitting in this room... And you saying you will do anything. So, you perform it. That was the deal for the season two of the match of So, you wanted to see me do it how I do it properly. Let's see how I do it properly. Jack. With both of us. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring you into that. I'm going to teach you how I do it. I'm going to teach you how I do this. Okay, right. So, we'll start again. Are you ready? Please welcome Matt Cluley. Right, have a look at that. Make sure there's no secret compartments, no trapdoors, no holes. Make sure there's nothing wrong with it. It's a die. All the numbers are there. They're all different, correct? Yep. Colours are inverted because I like black stuff. But other than that, it's just a die. No, that I'm aware of. Okay, perfect. What I need you to do, shake the die up, put it down on the table, keep your hand over the top of it. Go. Have you had a look at the number, Jack? Yeah. Take a look at the number. It's really important that you look at the number. I got it. You got it? Yeah. You sure? Okay, cool. So I'm not going to read your mind. That's not what I do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read facial cues, facial tics, facial expressions and tells. And whenever you ask a human being a question and then tell them not to verbalise the answer, 
what happens is it comes out in their facial expressions. This works with 99% of people. This has only not worked with me six times this entire year and they've all been women and they've all been teachers and you are none of those things. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing, okay? okay. So we're yeah. gonna ask him a couple of questions <coughs> and we're gonna get him to count. Okay. So just watch his face. Normally it happens with the eyes, either on the corners, the nostrils flare every now and again. Sometimes it's the corners of the mouth. But they are anyway. The times the, what, the nostrils flare. Yeah. That's because he's aroused for some reason. I don't know why, but we'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, and then other times the jaw tenses up as well. So you just have to look out for one of those things. Okay. So just look at me. One, two, three, four. Now you can't laugh. Don't laugh. This is, this is serious stuff. This is serious. <laughs> just look at me. Try and keep a straight face. Try not to give anything away. If you laugh when I say your number, it's going to make it blatantly obvious. And the trick is to try and not help me get the number. Okay. You ready? <laughs> Okay. Do you want to get all this out? It's all right, we've got all night. It's absolutely fine. Okay. You ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, perfect. Five. Did you see it? It's five. This, oh, this corner twitched on that eye there? No. Did you not see it? No. Okay, watch it for this time. Do it again. Shake it up. Put your hand down on the table. Keep your hand over the top of it. Have a look at the number. <coughs> yep. <clears throat> you got it? Yeah, I got it. You sure? Yep. Okay, same thing again. You ready? Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Were you watching that eye? Yeah. Nothing happened on that eye. You know why nothing happened on that eye? Why? Because I told him that's where we tick. So he's concentrating that much on his eye that the rest of his face loosens up and it's normally the opposite side of the mouth, which was that side and it ticked. And weirdly enough, he got the same number again. It's five, right? Yep. Take your hand off. Perfect. So when you tell somebody what to focus on, when you tell somebody that that's where they tick, it's never that one the second time around because they always, they're concentrating on that. So they're concentrating on not, and then it loosens the rest of their face up. You know, when you go to a casino and you see <coughs> the professional poker players and they've got sunglasses on, mm -hmm. it's because they know they tick with their eyes. So they wear sunglasses to stop the other poker players seeing their ticks. True story. Do you want to try something with him? Or not? You try. Just have a look at it, make sure it's, the jack's not one of my stooges. It's just a normal guy, right? Okay, perfect. Just shake it up, put it down on the table. Have you had a look at the number? It helps if you look at the number. You sure? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to try the verbal method to it. So instead of um, me talking, you're going to talk. So what I need you to do is look at me and slowly just count out loud to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four. Perfect. Take your hand off. Four. So you know what happens when you ask somebody to verbalize the answer to a question is they either go up at the start or down at the end. So he went one, two, three, four, five, six, and it went down at the end of it, which means it's a four. You're still looking pretty dubious. Okay, that's really simple because it's a one in six shot, right? I've got a one in six shot of getting that right. The <coughs> odds are kind of in my favor. Whereas this is a one in 52 shot. So the odds of me getting this are very, very, very slim. Would you agree? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Have you ever helped? Oh, I'm not helping one now. You're not helping one now. Okay, so they're all there, they're all different. Yeah, 52 cards, 52 possibilities. Thank you. Is there yeah. Else I can help with? No, there's nothing you can help with at all, Siri, but thanks for offering. <laughs> right, you ready? 52 cards, 52 possibilities, they're all there, they're all different. Yeah. What I need you to do is just take a card for me, have a look at it, remember it. It's really important that you remember it. Because if I get to the end and I go, was that your card? And you go, I can't remember. It's a terrible trick. Okay. Sense. Okay. Perfect. So have a look at it. Remember it, and then just hold it right here for me. It's really important that you hold it there. Okay. Okay. Go. Beep. That one. Yep. Perfect. Now you've worked with uh, you've worked with him for quite a long time now, right? Yeah. So it'd be kind of nice to figure out how he lies. Mm -hmm. Be nice to know the tells and stuff, and then he'd never, as an employer, it'd be good to. Yeah, for him never to be able to lie to you. Okay, so let's figure it out. Let's have a look and see what happens. <coughs> I've done this with couples before, and it's uh, it's not always great. I'm hoping they're all still together, because I normally do it with the girl teaching the lad how the lad lies, and they always go white, but he doesn't seem to care, so we should be fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna ask you some questions, really, really simple questions. All I need you to do is answer those questions in your head. Okay. Okay, don't answer them out loud. If you answer them out loud, this is way <coughs> less impressive. Just need you to answer them in your head. Don't nod, don't smile, don't do anything. Don't react in any way, shape or form. Complete resting bitch face for the whole of this thing, okay? Bitch. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So the first question I'm gonna ask you, it's really, really simple. Is the card red or black? Red, perfect. So he ticks, he, I told him at the start that he ticks with his eye. So now he's still concentrating on that. So he ticked in exactly the same place it was there. It just flinched a little bit at the bottom. So that tells me it's a red card. 
okay? So uh, it's a red card, so that brings it down from 52 to 26, so that's not a bad start. Um, cards, playing cards are either number cards or picture cards, correct? Oh, he's not flinching, brilliant. Okay, normally people react to that and go, yeah, and I got that answer. But yeah, they are, so they're number cards or picture cards. So this is gonna be either a number card or a picture card, isn't it? Perfect, it's a number card, okay? So he gave that away without you even asking the question. I just said number card or picture, same thing again. Do you see that eye? So he's concentrating now on his mouth and that eye twitched. So it's a number card. So number cards are either low cards, middle cards, or high cards. Low cards are two, three, four. Middle cards are five, six, or perfect. So it's a middle card. That's really good. You actually, you're trying really hard and the harder that you try not to give something away, the stiffer your face gets. You know, you've got that, you're not gonna get me a magic boy look on your face. Yeah, well, that makes it a lot easier for me because it stiffens your face up. So if you actually want to try and get me with this, you need to relax, relax a little bit more. You can drop one of your hands down if you want to. Um, if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. But the stiffer your face is, the more pronounced your expressions and your tells are. So you've just told me straight away that it's a red card and it's uh, a middle card. So five, six, five, perfect. So it's a middle card and it's a five, uh, red card and it's five. So uh, if it's a red card, it's a five. Um, just look at my hand. So it's, if it's a red card, it's either a heart or a diamond. So just picture on the palm of my hand, whether it's a heart or a diamond, just focus really hard. It's a big red heart or a big red diamond on the palm of my <coughs> hand. Just picture it, hearts, diamonds, hearts, diamonds, hearts, diamonds, diamond, 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 perfect, five diamonds. Let's have a look. Five of diamonds. <coughs> wow. You're like a human. <laughs> you're like a human lie detector. That was. Incredible. I am. I am. Thanks very much. I'm here all week. How long was that? You have still got time. Am I? <laughs> and I, see I thought pops. I might. Um, you're doing well. Okay. Um, we'll try it with you. So. What I'm going to try and do. This, that was kind of like. Neurolinguistic program, what I just did to him, yeah. his NLP, that's what it's called. Darren Brown's a master in that, um, as you know. Um, but it's neurolinguistic program, so it's reading facial cues, tics, expressions, and tells. There's also something that he does very, very, very well, which he talks about a lot in his shows, which is the power of suggestion. So he can suggest something to you, and it makes you think or believe that something impossible is actually happening. But all it is is suggestion, which is what we're going to try and do to you. Okay, mm -hmm. so first thing I need you to do is, um, let me, um, I'm just going to try something. I've only done this a couple of times before because it's actually really, really difficult to do, but we're going to give it a go and we're going to see what happens okay. and how suggestible that you are. You trust me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So all I need you to do is just have a look at those. So there's some symbols written down on that card. We're not going to show anybody else just yet, but there's some <coughs> symbols written down on that card, yeah, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. So what I need you to do is remember those symbols. Easy. In order. Okay, even. Yeah, easy. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, so you can remember those in order. Just remember the, the card itself. It's easier to like remember an entire picture than it is to just remember um, a sequence. So if you remember the card there, remember the angle of the card, and what we're gonna try and do is affect your memory. Okay. So if you remember the, 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 the sequence, the, the symbols, the angle that you're looking at this, and just remember the whole picture. Okay, yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then what, I want you to, to just sign it at the bottom there for me. Not sure anybody else. Yeah, there we go. Is the pen working? It is now. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so, and you're happy with this. Do you need another second? No, go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, it's easy. Okay, it's easy, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take your card away. Okay. We're going to give it to you. So I just want you to hold on to that for a second and just keep that there. Now, we're just going to try something that might be a little bit weird, but don't freak out. This is only going to affect what we're trying to do. It's not going to have any lasting effects or mm -hmm. affect anything that's happened in the past, okay? We're just going to try in this very moment, we're going to try to just take something away, take something out of here, a little section of your memory, 
okay? So just remember the, the card, remember the angle that you were looking at the card, and we're gonna try and, and take that angle away, okay? So you're picturing it, and you're picturing the symbols across the top. And what, you know, just put your hand out for me. Are you right or left-handed? Right-handed. Yeah, put your left hand out for me, palm down. Perfect, and can I touch you? Yeah. Is that okay? So I just need you to concentrate and just look at me, just concentrate really hard and I'm gonna count down from three and I'm gonna click my fingers. And just remember, we're gonna try, take a little bit of that angle of the picture that you were looking at away, it's gonna go. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. You feel anything? You feel any different? No. You sure? Yes. Okay, that's good, that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Okay, um, you've got that, yeah? yeah? You can confirm that's his card, he's signed on the bottom. Doctor's handwriting, yeah. Doctor's handwriting, okay, perfect. I'm not gonna touch it. What I'm just gonna do is I want you to just keep an eye on that, and then I'm just gonna ask him some questions, and then we're gonna see what happens as we go, okay? okay. You ready? Yeah. So, um, you remember the symbols? Yeah. In order? Yeah. yeah. Perfect, what was the first symbol? Just say it nice and, nice and clear. A uh, square. A square, the first symbol was a square. Yeah. What was the second symbol? A uh, circle. A circle, perfect. Are we right so far? Yeah. Perfect, what was the third symbol? A cross. Excellent. Third symbols across. Yep. But what was the fourth one? There were just three. They were just what? Three. There were just three. How many symbols are on that card? I see four. There's four <coughs> symbols no. on the card. So what was the first symbol? Quick fire. What was the first uh, symbol? Uh, square. What was the second symbol? Circle. What was the third symbol? Cross. What's the fourth one? Didn't exist. Are you swearing that you you only remember three symbols? Then there were only three symbols. There were categorically there were only three symbols on that card. Categorically, there's only three symbols. And on you that recognise card. your signature again? Yes, of course. So now, was that your signature? Yes. How many symbols on that card? <clears throat> Four. Do you now believe that that suggestion is real? Yes. Thank you very much. What's the first one? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's for absolutely nothing at all. Well, that wasn't shit. That was good. That was good. Is that a compliment? That was I not think it shit. it was. It's recording, right? Yeah. It is. That was good. That was good. Seriously, what was the first war? Were you going to bust out some coin magic on me? I was going to, and then I just decided not to. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna take some coin I'm magic not, out? I'm not going to do your coins. Honestly, that's you. like that's like Luke Skywalker bringing out a lightsaber and saying, Hey, Yoda, let me show you what I've got. Exactly. Yeah. No, so I just I decided against it. That's probably wise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> realistically. Uh, no, that, right. Okay, let's look at the positives. That's very polished. Very, very polished. Like, I can see that at a gig, killing. I can see that killing at a parlor show. I can see that doing really, really well. The thing with the video, <coughs> I've only done that twice. It was great. It was great. Uh, for those people who are watching, it was basically And Verdi's Die. Just yeah. a standard presentation of And Verdi's Die. Nothing spectacular, no. just a standard presentation. It was then the simplest use of a Stebbins deck. And I know you normally do more with the Stebbins deck, but that was the simplest use of a Stebbins deck I've ever seen, and then Sankey's... Um, out to lunch. Uh, the Out to Lunch principle for, uh, from Jay Sankey's Boris Poker's DVD, um, which is an amazing trick. Okay, so those three routines are great. Now, let me talk to you about the Bear Pit, and I'm being serious here for, for once. Um, the Bear Pit is meant to be, and this is coming from somebody who taught Ryland what to do in the Bear Pit, spoke to Nemed about what he should do in the Bear Pit, and somebody who's done the Bear Pit himself. The Bear Pit is meant to be a place where you go and you perform the stuff you would perform in a gig. I can't do that though, can However, I? And, 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 and it's like meant to be the stuff that you'd actually do in the real world, which is great. And that's all well and good. However, you have to factor in the cunt factor in the there's going to be a lot of magicians there. And it's the same thing with competitions. It's the same thing with the gala show. Not everybody, 95% of the magic community are amazing, but there's going to be a percentage of people sitting in that bear pit that are sitting there with their arms folded going, don't know why it's easy, I can do better than that. Oh, look at that, all he's doing is doing four minutes with a die. Oh, it's just a gimmick, he hasn't got any real skill. Now, now, that's the attitude that some magicians will have. Now, what you did there was incredible because how you can go to a gig and get great feedback is because of the way that you are able to present this stuff and you make people believe that you can 
read their minds. You make people believe that you have got the ability to take away their memories. You have got the ability to tell them what's number, what the number is on the die. But the people in the audience are going to see and Verdi die, stab it. It's not going to fool anyone. No. Now, that's maybe not a problem. It's maybe not a problem that you don't fool people. But the other thing is the way that you perform, it's kind of very intimate. Do you know what I mean by mm -hmm. that? It's very, you, you're getting lots of people involved, but it's not a la la la. It, it's kind of more of a, you draw them in as opposed to projecting outwards. Mm -hmm. I agree and, with that. The, and the thing with that, when you think about the bear pit and you were there when you watched Ryland and Nemed do it, mm -hmm. it's fucking mental. There's, that room is rammed. There's people literally everywhere. You can't move from one place to another. There's no. normally about 50 or 60 people watching you. Yeah. I think that that might be a little bit... What you don't want to do is go and do something at the bear pit where people can't really follow what you're doing because they can't hear you properly. Because don't forget, you're going to have some other bloke next to you. Yeah. You're going to have some other person next to you over there. You're going to have another person over there. And, and as they do magical moments, there's going to be lots of clapping and cheering. Like you think about the bear pit there. And Nemin started his thing by throwing a cube up and solving it. And so did Ryland and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And there's lots <laughs> of cheers. And I don't think there's any moment. Right, you did that for Jack. I don't think Jack's ever seen you do stuff like that before. There was no moment where Jack clapped. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't good. And you could argue that Jack's seen every single trick under the sun a thousand times. But there's also the element of the fact that the way that you perform and the stuff that you do isn't necessarily the sort of thing that makes people go, Woo! When I'm it's, doing that stuff live, I have to prompt people to clap. Yeah, because, because that's the <laughs> sort, of, that's the the sort of... of stuff that makes people go, hang on, what the fuck did I just see? Yeah. It's, it's kind of more... I don't even get, and there's nothing, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I know from the feedback forms, you go out and you absolutely smash it, and this style works for you. However, you must agree with me that being able to adapt a different style yeah, yeah, yeah. would be better in certain gigs. I'm sure there's been gigs that you've gone to where you've kind of struggled and you've had to lean more on the hopping halves and, and that side of your repertoire. Than, 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 than that because it's kind of too loud and too noisy and if you haven't you're definitely going to get into that yeah, situation yeah, especially agree. into coming into the Christmas season for the first year because you weren't really doing it last Christmas and Christmas parties with the DJ going and people throwing party blowers all over the place you try yeah. and do that to a big banquet table of 12 people so it's not going to work so here's another I think we look at the bear pit especially the close-up performance uh, forget about the House of Secrets for a minute I think we look at this as a way of kind of expanding your repertoire because you've coasted by you have i'm not being rude i'm not being funny you've coasted by on the same shit now for too long so but, but i've only I been also, a magician for a year not long enough now here's the thing that, that, that i i said to nemid like nemid's how incredible is nemid right he he and you probably won't like me for saying this on camera but the first time he applied to join the magic circle he didn't pass the audition now, the reason he didn't pass the audition is because he decided to put this brand new act together specifically for the Magic Circle to impress the examination committee mm. um, using stuff that he'd never done before because he thought that was what they wanted to see. And, and, and it all went tits up because he was doing stuff he'd never done before and it yeah. was all technically quite sophisticated and so on. And, so on. and a lot of stuff went wrong. And when he went back, he just did the shit he normally does and he got through straight away. And what I don't want to do is have you spend the next three and a half months doing stuff just for the bear pit. I don't want to sit here and help you put together an act that you can do at the bear pit once and one time only and never do it again. Because what that's going to end up doing is that's just going to end up in disaster. I'd rather you do that. I'd rather just call the matrimentary off and just say, look, you do that. You do it well enough. Go and do that at the bear pit and you'll get by. But knowing you like I do, you don't want to get by. <laughs> I don't want to get you want to go out there and you want to have people come up to you afterwards and go, you smashed it because you've got an ego, because you're a performer. And every perfor that's not a bad thing. You know, people sometimes say to me, <laughs> oh, Craig Petty's got an ego. Of course I fucking have. I'm a performer. You can't be a fucking performer. You can't have that desire to walk on stage and not fucking have an ego. 
That's not a bad one. thing. I That's not a bad one. thing as a performer. I worry about the performer that goes out and doesn't have a fucking ego. Look at Ryland. The little fucker's got an ego the size of a planet. Yeah, because he gets it from you. Hereditary. Genetics. But you have an ego as well, <laughs> right? You really do. I want to do well, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And you want people to come up to you afterwards if and I'm go... I'm going to do something as ridiculous as walking into the bear pit. Then I'm, I want to give it everything I've got. So we need to... Almost go back to basics like we did at the beginning of the matrimonial season one. Because what I did, and maybe I made a mistake doing this, but at the beginning of season one of the matrimonial, if they look back at season one of the matrimonial, the first fucking thing I taught you is Stebbins. And that's still your best trick. <laughs> <laughs> it is, if you think about it. And then the next week, I gave you a fucking unverted eye, and that's been your second best trick. You, what you've done is you've, you've taken all this self-working shit, and you've made it work for you, and you've gone, there you go, that's it. And that's what I mean by coasting by. And it's the same thing that a lot of magicians do. So what we need to do is we need to almost unlearn that stuff. And we need to go back to basics, and we need to have you ready when you go to the bear pit to do more impressive magic, because that's going to make you a better magician. Because then when you go to gigs and this, stuff that you do that you just showed me doesn't work you're going to be in a better you're going to be in a better you know you're going to do you know what i mean it's going to be yeah. you're going to have a, a more strings to your bow kind mm -hmm. of thing you know so we're going to and and this is only going to work if you actually force yourself to go to gigs and do the stuff that i'm teaching you i know it's not going to work I'm not going to learn stuff and then the first time I perform it in front of real people is going to be at the fucking bear pit. Exactly. And I think it's going to make you a better magician because then at the end of this whole thing, when we get to season two, at the end of season two, you're going to be like, this is amazing because I've got this stuff that I know works that I learned at the beginning of season one. But now I've got this and this and this and this and this. So with that in mind, we need to, you, you haven't really spent much time doing sleight of hand. I know that you kind of touched on sponge balls, but let's be honest, ever since I taught you that sponge ball routine in season one, how many times have you actually done it at a gig? And you've seen me do sponge balls and kill with it, so you know it works. How many times have you done it? Exactly. You've probably even <laughs> forgotten how to do the fucking thing. So, we're going to go back to basics, and there's, a, uh, there's an expression, right? And the expression is... <laughs> if you want to get good at sleight of hand, this is what we need to do now. Season two is about getting you. It's about, the, the, from the close-up side of things, it's about getting you to a point where you can go out and do an act in front of magicians and they're going to go, wow, that's really good sleight of hand. To get you to that level, and I'm not talking about cards, I'm talking about other stuff. To get you to that level, we need to teach you sleight of hand. And there's an expression that the best way to learn sleight of hand is to learn the cups and balls. Because everything, absolutely everything that you need to learn about sleight of hand can be taught from learning the cups and balls. Will you actually do the cups and balls in an act? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not, because you need a lot of table space. But that stuff can be applied to coin magic, it can be applied to chop cups, you learn about false transfers, you learn about timing, you turn about loads, you learn so much. So what's going to happen next week? Do you know anybody that lives around here that does cups and balls in his act? Oh, fucking hell. Every single time he goes out and does a yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would that be? You were a little shy to the sun. Yes, who did the cups and balls at the bear pit last year and had lots of people saying it was the best cups and balls I've ever seen. He's going to teach you cups and balls. Great. And then, at the end of it, you're going to go out the following week. Have you ever seen those guys at Covent Garden where they're doing busking and stuff? Yeah, we went to see them. Yeah. Well, we're going to do the same thing in Cannock. You're going to do... <laughs> No, we're not. Uh, again, I refer to season uh, one. I refer to episode uh, one where you said you were going to do anything. I need to put you in an uncomfortable... Cups and balls in the middle of Canic. I'm going to get stabbed. I, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I have They'll to... get stolen and then I'll get stabbed. I'll get your cheap set. Stabbing thing I'm not worried about. Now, here's the thing. Look, I have to put you in an uncomfortable situation oh, fuck. Yeah, you know. because you're going to be in an uncomfortable situation at the bear pit. I need you to be able to perform in a situation outside your comfort zone. Going to a gig is inside your comfort zone. Performing it here is inside your comfort zone. Performing to Jack or Michael or me or Sarah or anybody is inside your comfort zone. If we're going to make this work and we only have three and a half months to do so, we need to push you out your side your comfort zone. So, and then you need to start doing it in gigs and we're going to get cameras with you and we're going to watch you doing it in gigs. Not just cups and balls, but we're going to use that. Ultimately, I want you to learn a chop cup. 
I think a chop cup routine at the bear pit would be great. In order to get to the chop cup, I want you to learn cups and balls technique. So we're starting with the cups and balls. If you learn a chop cup routine, I guarantee you'll do it in every gig. I guarantee you'll do it in your stage show. You'll do it all the time. But we have to get there and we have to get you comfortable doing it in a really harsh environment. So next week, Rylan teaches you cups and balls. And then you're going to do some street theatre in Cannock Town Centre doing the cups and balls. So, <clears throat> that's what's going to be happening next week, people. Got to go. I know you've got a gig. You want to take some cups of water? No, with I you? fucking don't. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, we're trying to help. Oh, um, God. Matt's going to be next uh, back next week, and he's going to be learning all about the cups and balls. It's going to be very, very exciting. And uh, look out for Matt. Hey, it could be that you you take up busking and you go do it at Covent Garden on the weekend, and that'll be fun. I'm not driving all the way to London on a weekend. To not make any money doing magic because I'm nowhere near as good as the rest of the guys that are there. Hey, I've had an idea. Maybe I can get Nathan Earl to come and have a chat with you as well. I'm going. I've got to go to the gig. <laughs> Before you come up with any more stupid ideas. Matt, say bye to everyone. Bye. Guys, check next week out. It's going to be hilarious. Matt is going to die in his ass. <laughs>